Yo, what's going on everybody? It's so good to be making content again. In fact, this is going to be the first technical video I made in like 18 months. <laughs> so, um, welcome back to the channel. My name is Harley and it's great to see you. Um, I'm feeling a little inspired right now and I think the cause for my inspiration is I just got back from DEF CON, um, which was, as always, an amazing experience. Um, and I was reading some research here by James Kettle. I didn't actually get to see his presentation at DEF CON, um, but a lot of my coworkers have been telling me like, yo, you gotta, you gotta check this one out. So <laughs> I finally decided, okay, I'm gonna take down a few minutes and, and read this, uh, this paper. Um, and it's really opened my eyes to a vulnerability that I've just never spent any time really in the past exploring, which is uh, race conditions. So um, if you're like me and you haven't spent time exploring race conditions, then you know, maybe you'll want to follow along in this journey. I'll leave an article here to this uh, paper that he released down in the description for you guys to easily come across it um, and read this if you'd like to. But it looks like Portswinger has actually released a handful of Web Academy labs around race conditions. So I was diving through them, just kind of like exploring the vulnerability. And um, I don't know, it felt like something that I could totally make a quick video on. So if you guys wanted to go along this journey with me, exploring race conditions, and uh, let's just dive in. Okay, so let's set the stage a little bit about what we're looking at here on the screen. So on the left side, we have the, uh, the Port Swigger lab, and then here on the right side, we have the Burp Suite uh, project that I'm working in. And so let's just kind of start by diving in and figuring out what we need to do. And so the, the goal of this lab is for us to successfully purchase this specific item, uh, this elite leather jacket, and we want to purchase it at a unattended price or unintended price we can see by just looking right here at the lab right away we have this like promo code that's shown on the as a banner and then if we look at the price of this jacket uh it's a very leaked price here of 1337 so i'm just gonna start by signing into my account um and then we'll start poking a little bit and try to understand like the behavior of this application and so they give us this user which is wiener the password is peter and we get signed in and then once we're logged in here, we can see right away we get like, oh cool, you've got a store credit of $50. This is awesome. Um, by the way, while, while we're interacting with this web app, I'm gonna just keep the HTTP history tab open so that way we can just see the requests that are going through as we interact with the application. And so if we come back to the home page, we see all these different items here. And if we view the details of this specific item that we're wanting to look at, let's just add this to our cart. And when we do, we see a post request to this cart endpoint, and it contains like the product ID of the item we added, as well as like how many of them that we want. Um, so that's great. Let's go take a look at our cart now. And so now we have a git request to the cart, and this returns back this page where we can see the items that are in our cart. We can see like the total checkout price. And so we also see now uh, a field for us to apply a coupon. So I'm just curious what happens if we take this coupon, we add it, and we just try to apply this real quick. We can see, okay, cool, we've got a pretty decent discount. We have this post request to this cart coupon endpoint. And it looks like that contains a mix of a CSERF token as well as a, uh, a coupon parameter here. And the response that we get back is coupon applied. And so right away, my first instinct is like, well, what happens if we just like send this request to repeater? and send it a second time. And we can see, okay, so the coupon's already applied. So the application is doing some sort of check to see have we already used this coupon, and if so, don't allow that user to use it a second time. This is where you might start thinking about like a race condition in the sense that in order for the application to know whether or not you use this coupon, it's gotta go store that data somewhere, you know? So like maybe in the back end of the application, it's got a variable that's like, you know, has use coupon equal true or equal false. Um, and, you know, something like that might be going on. So what happens if we were to send a request that issues, you know, many uh, attempts at using this coupon within a very, very short time frame? The race condition, right? Are we able to potentially apply this coupon more than once? Another okay, so now that we know that we can apply this coupon code 
Let's see if we can actually do a race condition and exploit this coupon code. If I remove it, I want to make sure that the application would then allow me to come back to our request here of postcard coupon and submit this a second time. So I'm going to send it and we can see, yes, coupon applied successfully, right? If I try to do it another time, it says, no, it's already applied. But as long as we come back to this page and we remove it first, it allows us to send it another time. So that's good. Um, that means that, you know, if we need to like reset or whatever, um, it, it's easy enough to do. So right now we have the coupon applied because I just sent that request. I'm going to remove it again. And now what we want to do is actually make a series of requests here. I'm going to close this tab. And so we're going to make a bunch of these requests. And it's really easy to do. You can just like control R and this will send it to repeater again. Um, and we're going to probably send maybe like 20 of these. So I'm at like 115 right now. We'll go to like 135. So I've got 20 of these identical requests here that all will just do the same thing of applying this coupon. There's a new feature in the latest version of Burp Suite that will allow you to actually come in here and you probably can't see it. Let me move this over a bit. You can come in here, move it a little more and you can create a tab group. This is actually like super cool at grouping tabs. I, like I'm glad that this feature exists. Maybe it's been around for a while. I'm just now seeing it. Um, I'm gonna name this group uh, race condition and I'm gonna basically click this first one, shift click the other one and I'll just give it here a red color. I'm gonna hit create. So now we have this uh, collapsible group that you know groups all these tabs together. Why this matters, I'm gonna go to move this back. Why this matters is because now I can come into send and I can actually say, okay, we wanna send this request in a sequence or we can send the group in parallel uh, as a single packet attack. And again, that, that paper that James Kettle wrote it goes into detail about what a single packet attack is, kind of how it works. I highly recommend you give it a read. Um, but the first thing we want to do here is just kind of establish some sort of baseline with the application. And so what happens if I were to just send, you know, these requests here in sequence of another? So I'm just going to say send it in sequence as a single connection. And we're going to send that off. And then we're going to kind of click through these and look at the response. So the first one comes back as coupon applied. But then we can see that the next one here says, hey, that's already applied. And as we click through, notice how the response from the server is always the same. It's like, hey, coupon already applied. And that's because while we did like send all these with a single click, notice when I get to this one and we just wait long enough, um, we'll eventually, hopefully maybe, see a response come back from the server. Um, maybe not, this one seems to just like got lost in translation, but this one came back and said coupon already applied as well. So if we reload this page, we're likely just gonna see yeah, that the coupon was only applied a single time, which was from this first request. However, if we were to remove this, and then we actually change this to where it does it as a single packet attack, it sends them in parallel, basically all at once. Let's see if the behavior is any different. So we're gonna send this group in parallel. And again, we see that behavior of, okay, the first coupon applied. Oh shit, check that out. So the second one applied, third one applied, and as we keep going through, looks like in our test case here, they all seem to be applying. Okay, so this one returned back. Nope, sorry, this one already applied. So we've got a mix of things that have applied, things that haven't, but you can see we have quite a bit that come back and return, hey, coupon applied. So that's definitely different behavior. We may have just exploited something here. So I'm gonna reload the page. Whoa, and we see right away, uh, we have a pretty sweet discount here applied now. It's not quite enough. Notice how we still have $50 in credit and this wants us to pay 70. Um, so we actually need to keep trying to abuse this to make it even cheaper for us. So I'm gonna again, remove this coupon code. And instead of just like resending it with the same, you know, 20 requests, I'm just gonna add more requests. <laughs> again, I'm pressing control R. So I just added a bunch more requests here to our group, and then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna send the group in parallel, single packet attack, and um, hopefully in a moment here, once that finishes, we can reload the page and we'll have good news. Okay, so this one actually was not even as effective as the last one. 
Um, and I think that this is kind of like the expected behavior. There's a number of reasons as to why our race condition attack isn't always going to work consistently in the same manner. Um, so I think really the idea here is we know that we're able to get some coupons to apply while others don't. And so we're just going to keep trying. And notice now, giving it a third shot, we have a total price of $30. That is something we can do. So let's go ahead and place the order. And we solve the lab. So yeah, this was my first time exploring a race condition. I thought it was super interesting. Hopefully I did an okay job at explaining it. But if I got anything wrong, let me know in the comments. And um, maybe we'll continue on with some additional labs. We'll see you then.